Good day everyone! So my topic is the continuation of module 26 which is about the social-emotional development of high school learners. The content of my topics are stereotypical gender roles, antisocial behavior among adolescents, moral development, development of guilt, and influence in moral behavior. First is the stereotypical gender roles. So, several studies on gender stereotype shows on emotional response, girls in early adolescence are more self-conscious. They excel in verbal skills while they invest their time in forming intimate, involving the friendship. Meanwhile, boys show independence and are less emotional and involving themselves in sports. In across cultural studies, the female is associated with nurturance, difference, and abasement, while the male is associated with the dominance, autonomy, aggression, exhibition, and achievement. In general, female is described to be less active and weaker than the male. In stereotypes gender roles, um, for example, girls and women are generally expected to dress in typically feminine ways and be polite, accommodating, and nurturing, while men are generally expected to be strong, aggressive, and bold. So, every society, ethnic group, and culture has gender role expectations, but they can be very different from the other group. In the study on gender role in ideology, adolescents in European countries like the Netherlands, Germany, Finland, and England were most modern as they believed in androgynous or the equality of sexes ways of behaving. Meanwhile, adolescents in African and Asian countries were most traditional, while adolescents in the U.S. were midway. So let's move on to antisocial behavior among adolescents. So, Gerald Patterson formulated a developmental progression for antisocial behavior which takes into account. So, first is the importance of parental monitoring and discipline on the child in early childhood. It is important that the parent act as a model for how they want their child to behave. Um, disciplining your child means that teaching them to be responsible in their behavior and self-control with appropriate and consistent discipline, your child will learn about consequences and taking responsibility for their own actions. The ultimate aim is to encourage the child to learn to manage both their feelings and behavior. So next is involvement with peer and schoolwork in middle childhood. Um, peer group serves as a child's barometer for measuring how well they are accepted or rejected within the group. Um, social competence involves behavior informed by understanding of others' feelings and intentions. Next is commitment with peer groups in the late childhood adolescence. So, Peer relationships are very influential in adolescents. Strong peer attachments can enhance a young person's well-being when problems in peer relationships such as bullying can have a significant psychological, physical, academic, and socio-emotional consequences for both victims and perpetrators. In early childhood, age 10 to 13, the child is normally subordinated to conventions, authority in the family, and majority of children, including teens, are generally shows a reasonable degree of adherence to moral principles, able to succumb to the temptations to engage in unethical and unlawful behavior. In legal terms, the juvenile delinquent is a young person under the age of 18 who has been apprehended and convicted for transgression of established laws. Ju juvenile delinquency is occurrence with 1.4 million juveniles in the U.S. arrested each year for crimes such as vandalism, drug abuse, running away, and almost go. It's year for larceny, theft, robbery, and forcible rape. So this is the reasons to explain the incidence of juvenile delinquency. So there are six reasons. So first is the family factors, followed by poor parental supervision, 
poor parental behavior, feelings of alienations or the sense of separation by children, and external factors affecting the family, um, economic and social pressures. Then last is child rejection, abuse, and neglect. So, first reason is the family factors. Um, family characteristics such as poor parenting skills, family size, home discord, child maltreatment, and antisocial parents are risk factors linked to juvenile delinquency. Next is the poor parental supervision. Um, research confirms that the children raised in supportive, affectionate, and accepted homes are less likely to become deviant. Um, children rejected by parents are among the most likely to become delinquent. Studies also indicate that the child dispositions play a role in this casual chain. Um, um, next is the poor parental behavior. Um, in poor parental behavior, bad parenting is st also strongly correlated with juvenile delinquency. Research suggests that an authoritative parenting style dramatically decreases instance of ju juvenile delinquency. Conversely, neglectful parenting shows distinct positive to correlation with such behavior. So, next reason is the feelings of alienations or the sense of separations by children. Um, parental alienations primarily occurs during a high-conflict divorce in which the child identifies strongly with one parent, usually the custodial parent. The other parent is hated and rejected without any justifiable reason such as abuse. The child is also likely to be feel neglected and angry. Next reason is the external factors affecting the family, economic and social pressures. In social pressures, this is the combined pressures that are around you during everyday life, such as peer pressure, academic pressures, and socio-economic pressures. Um, economic pressures was indirectly associated with adolescence positivity through parental positivity. Last reason is the child rejection, abuse, and neglect. Um, children who are victims of neglect are the highest risk of becoming delinquent with the highest probability in becoming involved in criminal activity. Um, such as physical abuse victims who were reported to have a 9.3% chance of becoming delinquent. The dramatic rise of teenage suicides in different countries beginning the 1970s has aroused worldwide attention. Suicide rates have begun to double, even triple, especially in the U.S., with those aged of 15 to 24, constituting one peep of the victims. The astonishing suicide rates are equivalent to 13 incidents a day or 5,000 a year occurrences. Completed suicides are higher for boys, although three times as many girls attempt suicide. These are the common reasons for suicides. First is physical or sexual abuse by adults. Children who experience physical, sexual, and emotional abuse or neglect are at least two, two to three times are more likely to attempt suicide in later life, according to the largest research. Next is sexual victimization. Sexual assault is associated with an increased lifetime rate of attempted suicide. In women, a history of sexual trauma before age of 16 years is a particularly strong correlate of attempted suicide. And last reason is association with a suicidal friend. There are, however, warning signs that should be attended to as danger signals, for most of which is depression. Depression arises forms of feeling of being low, sad, and weary. In serious form, depression can influence a person through a pervasive loss of interest or pressure and persistence anxiety which can lead to committing suicide. Pre-suicidal adolescents may change mood in a matter of weeks from being calm and happy. Parents and teachers or any concerned adults should be able to recognize the suicidal cues and do the appropriate such as provide professional counseling and health assistance. 
So let's move on to moral development. Um, in his study of ethics and topics that have interested moral scientists through the age, Lawrence Colbert laid down three stages of moral reasoning among adolescents. First is the conventional level. Um, at this stage, the adolescent is able to understand and conform to social conventions, consider the motives of peers and adults, engage in proper behavior to please others and follow the rules of society. Um, the morality of an action depends heavily on fear approval. For example, um, I better not drink and drive because my friends will think less of me and I, in turn, will think less of myself. The focus of thinking of teen is towards mutual expectations, relationships, and conformity with others. Instead of stealing an object, he or she may think of others' options to acquire that object, such as by asking or saving money to buy the thing. Doing good springs from a desire to be a good person by keeping rules and respecting authority, some up in a following golden rule. Do unto others what you want others to do unto you. Next is the post-conventional level. At this stage, the adolescent wishes to conform to First is law and order. Don't steal because it's against the law. Number two, the social contract, rights such as life and liberty, must be applied to uphold the welfare of the majority in the society. And number three, universal ethical principles. The universal justice, equality of human rights, freedom of conscience. For example, a person who justified a decision on the basis of principal reasoning in one situation. Next is the development of guilt. Guilt is a sense of feeling responsible for one's actions, particularly when harm has been due to oneself or others. On the negative side, guilt can threaten self-image, such that if one is unable to thresh out guilt settings, there can be serious problems in adjusting to normal living, guilt that causes anxiety. On the positive side, guilt makes us aware of possible wrongdoing, serving as a regulator of individuals to be more responsible in upholding esteemed social values. Guilt is both a cognitive and an emotional experience that occurs when a person realizes that he or she has violated a moral standard, is responsible for that violation. A guilty conscience results from thoughts that we have not lived up to our ideal self. Next is the influences in moral behavior. Peers can encourage positive behaviors. For example, it's the good study habits. Although they can also encourage misconduct or inappropriate behaviors, peer influence should not be underestimated. Compared with the influence of peers, the influence of parents is more pervasive. The quality of parent-child re relationships is more positive when parents show competence. Non-oppressive rebel parental control appropriate support and direction. As adolescence goes through a stage of emotional autonomy, casting up infantile ties to family, it is important that he or she develops a sense of individual taking personal responsibility for himself and not leave responsibility with parents. The socio-emotional world of adolescence learner is complex and needs to be approached with care and understanding. Positive social and emotional development is important. This development influences a child's self-confidence, empathy, the ability to develop a meaningful and lasting friendships and partnerships, and a sense of importance and value to those around him or her. Teresa Molina from BS Ed 2B